Installation of Linux. Well, it's time to walk you through the installation of the Linux operating system. What you need to know first is that the install program runs within Linux itself. Now, that might seem like kind of a contradiction, right? How am I supposed to install Linux if I need to be running Linux already? Well, wh what you need to be running is a very minimal version of Linux. So you need to boot up some minimal version of Linux, then you can do the installation. And now, the choices for media are CDs, uh, you can use floppy disks, you can use DVDs, or you can just download it over the network. To download it over the network, you're going to at least have to download uh, like a floppy boot image so, so that you can boot off the floppy. And then uh, when you do the installation, you can point uh, the installation uh, program to the network uh, site where you're going to download uh, Linux from. Okay, and then once you uh, have the have the system booted up and you start the installation program, you have, there's different methods for the installation. You can do a text-based installation. You can do a GUI-based installation where you can point and click at various things and see uh, pictures and graphs of, of the disk partition layout, that kind of stuff. Or you can do a scripted installation, and and this is. Um, this is not on every distribution. Some distributions have this scripted installation, and the scripted installation is good if you're going to install Linux on multiple com computers at one time. So if you're going to do it on like 10 systems at once, then you can do a scripted installation and install it basically the same on all those different systems. Now the installation steps that you have to follow, first you put in the bootable media. So you put in your, your CD or your floppy disk to boot it off of, and then you power on your computer. If it's a network installation, you have to point the installation program to the site. Now, something I want to note with this with this uh, network installation is, you know, when I say a network installation, it could be, uh, you know, you're you're getting it off some site via like FTP or or HTTP or something like that. You're using the web to do this, or you could be working over like some local area network. Maybe the computer that you're installing it on doesn't have a CD drive, and, and, but some other computer in your office does have a CD drive. So you could put the CD in that other computer, do a network installation, and just point this computer to that, that computer and use the CD off that computer. The network installations are definitely the trickiest sort of installations. They, uh, you know, if the network goes down, you've got to start all over, and it's just a little bit trickier. You've got to enter more information. So the network installation is probably not for the, the, the novice user. Okay, if you've already used Linux before, then a network install can work perfectly fine. So if you're not doing a network install, you, you get to choose between a text-based uh, installation program or a GUI-based installation program. Let me just go back to that, that previous slide here. So if, if you think you, know, you don't want to spend money to buy a, a CD or something like that, um, I showed you before where you can download CD images and burn them. If you don't have a fast network connection or a CD burner, that's not going to work for you. But on that same site where I showed you uh, where you could download uh, c CD images, like linuxiso.org, was called. Um, you can also buy uh, distributions like CD distributions, very bare bones distributions with no manuals for like two bucks, okay, or three bucks or something like that. So, so this is not this is a good option even if you don't want to spend a lot of money. Three dollars is not that much of an investment for an operating system. You have to admit. So if you if you think you just want to do it for free and do it over the network and you're a novice, that might not be the way to go. And it might be better to get one of those you know three dollar bare bones distributions to start with. Okay, so so that's our installation procedure. We're basically, we're going to put in a bootable media. I'm going to boot it off CD, and we're going to boot Red Hat Linux. I'll power on the computer, and then I'll walk you through the process. I'll, I'll actually do a text-based installation, just because I think that's uh, more standard. Um, your, your video card might not support a GUI-based installation, so I'll just walk you through the text-based installation. The GUI-based installation is basically the same. You're just going to be able to point and click instead of using the up arrow and down arrow to do selections, that kind of stuff. So let's get started. So once I put the CD into my computer and I power it on, this is the very first screen that I see. If I want to install Linux, Red Hat Linux in graphical mode, I can just hit enter here. If I want to install it in text mode, I'll type text and it'll show up down here at the boot prompt. And again, I hit enter to do a text mode installation. We're going to do a text mode installation uh, just because every version of Linux comes with a text mode installation. Uh, text mode will work no matter what kind of video you card you have. Okay, uh, And you can follow right along. If you want to do a graphical mode installation and follow right along, you can, because the information that we enter is going to be exactly the same. The only difference is the interface. Uh, in text mode installation, I'm going to use the up arrow and down arrow to select
select cer certain items. And in graphical mode, you can just point and click, that kind of thing. Okay, and, and you can see in Red Hat, uh, they've got all sorts of different modes. They have expert mode, uh, they have Linux rescue mode, and what this means is if you've already installed Linux before, and now for some reason Linux doesn't boot anymore because your hard disk has some error on it or something like that, then you can boot into Linux rescue mode and maybe fix your hard disk, hopefully, and retain all that information you had before. So what I'm going to do here is just walk you through a whole series of screenshots of the installation process. Instead of showing you live video, and, and the reason I don't want to show you live video is just because uh, during the installation process, you know, the resolution changes and, and things flicker and stuff, and it just doesn't look good on the live video. So I'm just going to walk you through screenshots of every step along the way of the, of the installation, and I'm not going to skip any steps at all. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to type text down at the boot prompt. And then once I type text, I'm going to hit enter, and we're going to start the process of the installation. So the installation's starting, the system's booting up. You can see I'm loading drivers now. And then the first thing that we have to actually answer, a question that we have to answer, is what language would you like to use during the installation process? Okay, so this is the classic sort of, or the standard kind of screen that we're going to see in the text mode installation process. Okay, and you can see down here there's a legend. F1 for help at any time. Uh, tab to move between elements. So if I hit tab now, OK would highlight. If I hit tab again, back would highlight. If I hit tab again, OK would highlight again. All right, and then once I have the proper things highlighted, I hit the space bar to actually select that. And to select between languages here, I can just use the up arrow and the down arrow to move between the various languages. All right? So I'm just going to uh, hit tab to highlight OK and then hit spacebar to move on. Now the next question we have to answer is what model keyboard is attached to our computer? And there I'm just going to pick US. Again, I'm going to hit tab to highlight OK and hit spacebar to select it. And now I have to choose what model mouse is attached to my computer. Okay, I'm going to choose just generic three-button mouse. Uh, and that works fine for any three-button mouse. And like I said before, you know, it's good to have a three-button mouse with Linux just because Linux makes use of all three mouse buttons. Uh, if you only have a two-button mouse, you can choose uh, one of the various generic two-button mouses here uh, for whatever kind of connection you have to your computer, whether it's a PS2 connection, those little round plugs, or USB, the flat kind of plugs, or the serial connection, which is pretty old and you probably don't have that one. If you want to choose your actual uh, brand of mouse, you can scroll down and choose Logitech or whatever kind of mouse you have. If you do have a two-button mouse, you know, choose whatever one you want, but make sure you highlight or select the th uh, emulate three buttons here. Highlight that and then hit spacebar to select it, and then tab down to OK and hit spacebar again to move on. And now it says, welcome to Red Hat Linux. We're about to start the actual installation process. We've booted up the basic version of Linux. We've answered the pre-installation questions. And now we can actually do the real installation of Red Hat. Again, I'm going to tab to uh, highlight OK, and it looks like that. And then I'll just uh, hit spacebar to select. The next question that's asked of us is, what type of system would you like to install? So we can do a workstation installation for some kind of a desktop computer. We can do a server installation, obviously, for a server. We can do a laptop installation, obviously, for a laptop. And uh, Installing Linux on a laptop is a little tricky, and there's some special nuances there that you have to worry about, and the laptop installation is going to guide you through those. And then there's a custom installation and an upgrade existing system installation. We're going to do the custom installation, and we could do a server installation or workstation installation, but those installations make a lot of assumptions about what kind of software you want on your system. And I'd rather just guide you through the whole process and, and tell you, you know, talk about all those choices with you so you can get exactly the kind of software that you want on your, on your particular computer. So I'm just going to select OK here and move on. And then the next process is partitioning our disk. So Red Hat gives us the option of doing an auto partition. And what this is going to do is it's going to do a basic partitioning scheme, kind of like what I showed you in the last video with just a few partitions. If you want to partition the disk yourself, you can use DiskDruid or FDisk to do that. Uh, FDisk is kind of like the Windows program FDisk, so if you've used that before, this is pretty similar. Otherwise, if you're not familiar with FDisk, you should just use DiskDruid because it's a little bit nicer and it'll guide you through that process a little more easily. So I'm just going to choose auto partition here, so I'm going to hit the space bar and move on. And now it comes up with this warning. It says the partition table on device SDA was unreadable. Well, the reason it's unreadable is because this is a brand new disk and I'm installing Linux from scratch on this computer. Okay, so the partition table on device SDA was unreadable because it's not there. So it says to create new partitions, it must be initialized, causing the loss of all data on this drive. All right, so would you like to initialize this drive? We'll say yes and move on. 
And now it says, it asks a question about how much of the disk is, is really being uh, initialized. So, so say you have a dual boot system. Say you have Windows and you want to also dual boot Linux. Well, what you can do there is before you ever get to this installation process, you should partition your disk up to give Linux a big chunk of your disk. And in that case, you could say remove all Linux partitions on this system. If it's just a clean disk and you're, and you're just installing it from scratch, just say remove all partitions on this system. And then it says down here, which drives do you want to use for this installation? If we had multiple drives, they would all be listed.